I'm going to tell you a story, Monica, and the rest of the group that happened here recently. A lot of our stories involve Steph because she is the model for the new reality, you see, because once upon a time, not so long ago, she would say, well, all I know is what I know. All I know is what I know. I don't know what anybody else knows. I just know what I know. And so that's all I have. And I can learn. And when I learn something, then I'll know it. And then that will be added to what I know. And she would just go off by herself and not really share with others because nobody wanted to hear what she had to say. She'd say, well, I had this experience today or I had that experience today. And they would say, oh, go away. That's not real. And so she spent a lot of time on her own and she meditated and et cetera. And she found a lot of solace in it. But the idea of being able to be here today to tell you what I say was nothing that occurred to her. It is, as you say, the Western way, this channeling. And she said, that's not anything I want to do. I want to just reunite my energy with God's, you see. And that was about personal transformation, individual transformation. And that didn't matter what anybody else did. It was just her own way. And so she did. And then she would say, when we began to come and play, why are you guys here? What do you want of me? And we would say, well, we want you to help humanity. And she would say, well, I can't help humanity. All I can do is do what I do and know what I know. And when I learn something else, then I know that. And then my knowing is a little bit more profound, you see. But that's all I can be. And gradually, she came to see that she no longer is experiencing the old way when she would go away and meditate or do something to do it her way because her energy is now so reunited with ours, you see. And so this is the meeting of East and West, you see. East meets West. East, the personal transformation, meets West, the extension into the outer world, you see. So you can meditate and you can be happy, but if you don't extend into the world, you see, then you're only halfway there. But the West did one side and the East did another, and they didn't meet, you see. So recently, Steph joined a small group with a fellow who had found a lot of freedom through meditation. And he wanted to start a group to teach other people how to meditate so they could find that freedom too. And Steph joined that group and she said, do you mind if I let Steve be part of this? Because Steve was an important part of that. He'd like have some things he'd like to say when we converse. And they said, well, okay. And some of the people didn't like it. They did not like it. And they didn't want Steph to be part of the group. And there were a couple of them that persevered for a few meetings. And then the guy who headed up one day said to Steph, well, I can't play your way. I can't play your way because if you're going to have Steve talk to us, then that's not what I want to do. I just want to teach people to meditate so they can find the personal transformation, you see. So he had his own way to play, which was the Eastern way. And there are other groups that play in the Western way, and they say, well, we got to tell everybody this and that, and get them to follow us, and then we'll have this big group, and etc." And so he said, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And just like that, he cut Steph off. So she couldn't be part of the group. And she couldn't even communicate with him, to try to get further information on what had happened. It made him so upset. You see, because the way she plays now, 
is not compatible with the way that the Eastern tradition says you have to play. And so it is not compatible either with the way the Western tradition says you have to play. You have to get up in front of everybody and make them sit in a pew and tell them what to do. But this is a different way to play because it is a synergy of the two and it allows everybody in this group to begin to unite their energy and so gradually they will be lifted up too. This is the tradition of Jesus, you see, because Jesus was East and West. And Jesus did say, hey, we all have the same father today. So let's play together in a new way. And people said, go away, go away. If you want to go off by yourself in the wilderness and meditate for 40 days and 40 nights, cool. But don't come back and tell us that it's cool. <laughs> that we should all learn to be personally transformed, you see. And so they crucified him because he was a rebel. And we're a bit rebellious in here, you see. Because we say, hey, all those of you who are not caring about what you're doing to the world around you, the ocean will come and swallow you up and then you can have your rapture and get lifted up into heaven you see because that's what you wanted isn't it and this is very important because it is what they wanted and yet they deny it when it comes to them when it comes to them they run away in fear what the rapture is coming and god is going to take us all up into heaven oh my god oh my god oh my god we have to deny that that is near we have to deny that that is coming for us, even though for many a generation we've been talking about it, how cool it will be. And this is the conflicts that arise when people can't open their eyes and see the duality in everything, you see, the duality between you and God, duality between you and step, duality between you and the screen that you're looking at on your device. There's a duality between everything you see, but you're always in it, you see. You're always in it. It doesn't exist apart from you. It's a part of you. And there is a duality between the window and the wall. There's a duality between the rising dough and the falling dough. There is duality between the butterfly and the caterpillar. Everywhere you look, you will see duality. And everywhere you look, you will see God energy. And that is the Trinity. That is the Trinity. That no matter what you see, you know that it could not exist if God didn't let it be. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it does. In order to have something new, it has to be new. If we just keep trying to recreate the old, what is the definition? Um, new wine and old wineskins for 200. That, that one too. Insanity. Insanity <laughs> is doing the same thing over and over and hoping for a different result. If you say, I don't like the way things are, we got to figure out a different way, then you got to open yourself up to the possibility that something will come along that you never knew was possible. 
right? Otherwise, you're just doing the same thing over and over again and hoping for a different result. So what's the new thing that we're opening ourselves up to? Well, we're discovering it day by day, right team? We're discovering it day by day. It's becoming more clear to us day by day, but it's like it begins to take shape out of the fog, you see, out of the dark. Little by little, what we're doing begins to take shape. We don't really know how it's gonna turn out. We might have some ideas and I might tell you what I see because I see a lot of energy that I can translate in a different way than you can. However, the ability of me, Michael the Archangel, to be here today as a part of this team is something new. I come to various people at times and I talk to them and they may understand it or not, depending upon how open they are, how much personal transformation they've gone through in order to be able to join their energy with mine. However, the ability of a group to come together and say, hey, Michael, we're going to treat you just like one of us. You may look a little different than us because we don't even know what you look like. And you may sound a little bit different than us because you say things that are a little strange to us and we can't smell you, but we know you're there. And that would be kind of like saying to somebody, well, you're one of us. Even though maybe you're so autistic that you can't really express yourself in a coherent way, you're one of us. You see, you belong to our group and we love you because love is a glue that holds the two together, you see. Love holds me and you together. Love holds me in reality. That is the world I see and hear and feel together. Love holds me, Michael, to you and you to me. I can love you, but if you don't love me, it won't stick, you see. Thoughts, questions? I am so thankful for Monica. <laughs> This Thank is, you. This has just been, it's new to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's always great to have new energy comes in because it's like a game that you're playing of musical chairs or something, but it's always, or whatever game you're playing, it's always fun to have somebody come in who plays in a little different way that says, oh, that's fun now. You know, it, it's not, it's new and exciting. It's new and exciting, Monica, to have you I here. I do have like hundreds of thousands of questions, but I would oh, yeah. shut my mouth now. But can I ask one more question? Okay, so after I watched so many um, videos about uh, your communication, I feel like I want to be you. I want to be able to communicate with spirit myself. Or maybe my guy... Um, which I don't really know anything about. And then I said, I was following some uh, guidance advice. I was like talking to myself, come to me, come to me, I'm all open. But uh, the instant yesterday was, I was talking to myself, come to me, come to me, talk to me. And then I saw like cable moving a bit and I got so scared, I just want to hide under the duvet. So I feel like I really want to embrace the energy, but in the same time, I'm timid like a little mouse. So how do I resolve this problem I have? Like to be fully open and not be scared anymore. I hope everybody feel more or less the same way because if everybody is able to communicate, the world will have less problem because people will be more uh, wise. Yes, exactly. If we can heal the divide between heaven and earth, we then will ensure that 
we will be in a new reality. And that new reality will only resemble the old reality in the external complements, you see, and not in the eternal internal ones. Because when you have a problem, you'll just come to me and say, Michael, hey, I was wondering what your thoughts are on this, like Steph does. She just comes and says, hey, I have this problem with someone today. What do you guys think? And so we talk to her. So how did it get to be that way, you ask? How did it get to be that way? Well, that's the mystery, isn't it? And that's the mystery of getting up every day and saying, I wonder what will happen today. I wonder what will happen today. And every day, something happens, doesn't it? Every day, something happens and... You say to yourself, perhaps, well, I need something more. I need something more because I feel kind of poor in spirit. I don't feel happy, you see. I feel like I need something to come into my reality that's going to help me. So, Monica, you came into our reality to help us. Did we come into your reality to help you? Can you see it? Can you see how your reality changed already? And so you never know what's going to happen. And you say, I want to be able to talk to you, Michael, today in the way that I hear you play your song through Steph. How can I do that? How can I harmonize my energy with yours? You see? And we say, step by step, step by step. The whole journey starts with a step, you see. And we've talked about the golden steps up the mountain. And when you get to the top of the mountain, you apply. But you have to climb the mountain, honey. You have to climb the mountain. And you have been climbing. I can see that. And you just keep climbing. And as you climb, you find friends who are climbing with you. And you say, I want to climb with you. I want to climb with you. And maybe I can't do it the way that Steph does it. However, I can do it the way I do it. I can do it the way I do it. Because every day when I stop and say, hey, this was a good day, I come to see that as long as I don't resist it, Something new comes to me every day that will change the way I play. So that means that I'm changing too. I'm changing as the world around me is changing. And the world around us has been changing. But we are changing inside as well. And it is always the same. We're always changing together with our world. But sometimes we're just on the karmic wheel, you see, and we just go around and around and around. So just trust on yourself, my dear, and say to yourself, well, it would be fun if I could do that today. However, I can come into this group and say, I have this question. And Micah will talk to me. So Micah will come to me in his own way. That works for me, you see, because Micah will find a way to save the day. But you have to be open and accept what comes to you. We tell the story of the man who's drowning. And the boat comes by and someone says, you want to come and get in the boat? And they say, no, I'm waiting for God to save me. And it's the same thing. If you say, I want to do what you're doing, Steph, today. And yet, there's a boat that comes for you and it says you want to get in the boat. And Micah will talk to you if you're in the boat through Steph, you see. Does it matter what instrumentation it comes through? Does it matter to you? Does it matter that Steph is using a pendulum and someone else might say, Hey, I picked up a pendulum today and it didn't do what you it did for you. 
And you could say, well, it's different for everybody because things have to come together in a different way. Otherwise, it would be very boring, you see. But I have to accept my reality. And my reality is that I can hear you, Michael, answer my questions because I was bold enough to say, I want to join you today. Done. You had the courage of your convictions, you see. You were willing to face your fears, to say I'm kind of timid and I don't want to be on the camera, but you know what? If it helps others, I'm willing to do it. And that's the key, you see, to how Stephanie can communicate this way. If she didn't say, I want to be famous today and be able to communicate with you or better than the others or whatever. She just said, hey, I'm here today. I'm here today. How can I help you? How can I help you, blade of grass? How can I help you, God? How can I love you today? Not what can you do for me? And you said, how can I join this group and be a part of something that is helping humanity? And so you went beyond yourself, you see, in your desire to grow. You knew that it wasn't just about you. It was about your relationship with everyone else, you see. Are you following this? Anybody else? Thoughts on Monica's contribution or just any other questions? Open what Michael says. I have a question about uh, Monica's birthplace, Taiwan. How is that going to fare in uh, the upcoming climate change. It was Taiwan, right, Monica? Yes, got Taiwan. That right. There's a serious earthquake recently. I suppose oh, yeah. that's why you have this question. <laughs> he does these questions. Poorly. It will fare poorly. Oop. However, it's okay. Because... As we know, everyone goes to heaven. All dogs go to heaven. You have been going through the heavenly gates over and over and over again. And every time you come through them, you say, how glad I am to be home today. How glad I am to be home today. So when we say poorly, from the earth perspective, we say what a joyous reunion there's going to be for all the Taiwanese. How happy they're going to be to be home today and say, sure glad that life is over. <laughs> it was a tough one. And just like all the other people on earth who will have to play in a different way. And the ones who are paying attention won't be on Taiwan, you see. They'll be in a community that they gravitated towards in order to help humanity. And they will be the ones that say, well, everybody else gets to go to heaven and have a jubilee. But I'm going to stay here because I want to help you, God, to help humanity. And so they will have left the places that are going to be prone to so much destructive energy in order to help God, to help them, to help others, to see that God has it in hand today and you don't have to worry. The biggest thing is you don't have to worry. You don't have to have fear because you'll just be happy until the day you come through the heavenly gates and then you'll say, hey, God, I played my part, but it sure is good to be here for the after party. It's sure good to be able to sit down and take off that costume and say, what a good day. What a good day it was. And look at all my friends are here with me. I'm so happy, you see. 
So when we say see things from the earth side, it's not exactly the way they are. Unless we have joined our energy with heaven, you see. And then we understand the dichotomy. And we don't worry about it anymore. And because we don't worry about it anymore, God says, well, since you're not worried about it anymore, I think I could use you. Come this way. I think I have a job for you. And you say, okay, because I'm not worried about it anymore. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen to me because the worst that can happen to me is I go home and have joined the Jubilee. And those are the ones God is looking for. Those are the ones who are shining the light on earth, you see. Those are the ones that God says, well, you can help me to help yourselves, to help humanity, to help reality. You are the ones that can hear me when I say, hey, people, we got to do it in a different way. What's with all these wars? What's with all this overpopulation? What's with all these noisy cars that are polluting the atmosphere? What's with all these people that are trashing my world when they leave all their toxic tailings in the local land filings where they thought they were going to make so much money taking the resources out of the ground that won't be there for future generations you see they are the problem not the ones who can see reality and say hey, it's okay if you go away today, it's okay, because God will pluck you up out of the sea. But if you get in the boat, you see, you will be part of the ones who survive the tragic circumstances on earth in order to restore sanity. The ones who get in the boat do so because they're sane, you see, and they trust on God to save them. And so when God sends them a boat, they say, thank you, God. If I you saved me, I guess I'm here to save others too, you see. And the ones that get plucked up out of the sea and go to heaven will be fine until they have to come back to earth, you see, because everyone has to learn the lesson. Everyone has to learn the lessons of reality that you will receive what you give. And if you take your boat, and you see someone drowning and you go over there to pluck them out of the sea. And they say, just leave me be. I'm waiting for God to take care of me. Then that's all you can do. It's all you can do, honey. It's all you can do. However, if you see someone drowning and you go on by, then that's what will happen to you. They'll just drive their boat right past you and you won't even be alive to thrive because somebody didn't pick you up you see so the ones that drive their boat over to pick up the drowning person and the drowning person who says oh thank you today oh thank you today will thrive together because they work together they work together they weren't afraid of each other they didn't say oh you might kill me if i get in your boat what's the difference if you get in the boat and someone slits your throat or you drown at sea, you're just going to go back to heaven, you see. And so there's nothing to worry about because you are an eternal soul and you cannot lose the game of life. However, you can be part of the synergy of heaven and earth, you see, that brings paradise back to humanity. <laughs> always long answers, but I guess it's a lot of energy there, a lot of information to share. Any other thoughts or questions before we wrap up for today? We got, you know, another 10 minutes or so, <laughs> if you want to continue. Okay, Vic, thank you for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having me, everyone. I'll see you later. Yeah. yeah. Bye. <clears throat> 
Any other thoughts or questions? Monica, anything? Well, we got you here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So what bring me to the country? I mean, why am I not there with everyone else? Despite I have been in UK for 18 years, but my heart, I always feel like I'm with Taiwan. It's like my birthplace. I have a very strong feeling to it. Mm -hmm. So after the information you just reveal, I don't know how to make it because I understand they are going to reunion with everybody in heaven. But at the same time, I don't know. So am I not supposed to be there with them? I mean, I feel like I am um, just is a Taiwanese isolated in this country. So I don't know. I have to think about it. I just really need to think. Well, you always have a choice to where you want to be. And love will never die. Love will never die. Love will always be, and they will always be a part of you, and you will always be a part of them. It's impossible not to be. It's impossible not to be because, you see, in reality, all the soul energy is contiguous, continuous, and contained within all the other soul energy. It's difficult to explain on Earth. But everyone's a part of you, and you're a part of everyone you see. And some people will have a bigger part of you, <laughs> and some will feel very, very, very important to you because you had such a good time with them. But you've been 18 years away from them, and you're still here. And it doesn't matter whether you go to Taiwan and Taiwan slips into the sea, or whether you stay in England and England slips into the sea, or you go someplace else and it slips into the sea. It doesn't matter, you see. Because wherever you are, you will always be here. Does that make sense to you? You will always be here. You're here today. If you get so confused that you think you're not here today, then you will lose your way. I, I got it. I do. And so that's like saying, I, Michael, am here today. If I lost my way and said I was somewhere else and not here today, then I would be lost, you see. And God would say, hey, Michael, where are you? Because <laughs> I need you. And that's what we say to others, you see. We say, hey, where are you? We need you. And they say, oh, you're not real today. And we say, well, if we're not real, then you're not real either, right? Because what is reality? Reality is being here and relationship. It's your relationship with us. It's your relationship with your room that you're in. It's your relationship with your chair. It's your relationship with your family. It's your relationship with the bird that flies by. Without relationship, there is nothing. This is the miracle of God energy. The miracle of God energy is relationship. And it depends upon being here. Here now. Do you ever hear that phrase? Be here now. Be here now. Don't be in tomorrow. Don't be in yesterday. Just be here now and say, hey, today I have a thought of all my friends back in Taiwan. And I love the place of my birth and where I grew up, you see. I love it very much because it has so many good memories for me. But remember that it's all happening now. Because now is so expansive that it can hold all your memories. However, you can get lost in them if you get confused about your own reality. It's a little bit difficult to sort all this out when you're just hearing it for the first time or maybe the hundredth time and it's still not clicking for you. And that is part of the personal transformation, you see. That the personal transformation is when all of a sudden you go, oh, I get it now. I get it now, God, but I can't explain it to anyone. 
because it's kind of a gestalt experience, just habits. How do I explain to somebody who's blind the color blue if they have never seen, you see? But the difference is that when you meet somebody else who has come to see reality, then you'll say, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And they'll say, nice to meet you too. I'm so glad that you are like me because when you talk, I resonate with what you say. And although I can't explain what happened to me completely, I get a clue when I'm near you because the way you act, the things you say, the things you do, tell me that we have something in common, you see. We have a grasp on reality. So for you, of course, it's your decision. And you also have to take decisions about what you hear today. And you might say, well, that's what Michael says, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen that way. And that is true. Because you see, I interpret reality from my own point of view. But you have to interpret it from yours. And you never know what might happen. So somebody might be all worried about what would happen to their friends in Taiwan in the future someday, which we are not going to say when that might happen. But it could take a long time. And you might say, well, I'm so worried about my friends. I better go see them. And then you get in a car accident on the way to the airport and you get taken to heaven. You never know how it will go. But all you can say is God has it in hand. Because all you have to do is look around you and say, man, everything makes sense today. The birds that are flying have a sky to fly through. What if they didn't have a sky? What would they do? The worms that are crawling around in the dirt have dirt to crawl in. What would they do if there was no dirt? And that should tell you that God has it in hand. God knows how to make everything work, you see? And it's a job that I wouldn't want to have to do. And I know Steph doesn't care to think about doing it. So do you want to be the one that ruins reality? In other words, do you want to be the one that has to take care of everybody and every fly and every worm on the earth today? We can't. We can't do that. And the people have their free will to do things. It will become a force if I try to look after everyone. That is right. It's an impossible task for any part of God energy to try to control all the other parts, you see. It would be like saying that one half of your brain has to control the other half, you see. They both have a part to play. And so when we talk to you today, Monica, we don't know what you're going to say particularly, and you don't know what we're going to say. And so you don't get to say to Stephanie, Stephanie, here's your script. I want you to say it today because I want to hear exactly what I want to hear today. So you don't know what's going to be said today. And if when we tell you God has it in hand, so just do what you do and say what you say, that's the easiest way to play. That's the easiest way to play. There's no stress in it, no worry. No running around like a chicken with your head cutting off. Say, I got to take care of the world today. Got to make sure everything does play the way I want it to play out. You just say, I know God has it in hand because I trust that I wouldn't be here if it were not for God energy. And you wouldn't be here. And the sun wouldn't rise today. And the moon wouldn't set. And the grass wouldn't grow. And therefore, I know that God has it in hand and he has me in hand. He has given me this world that will 
allow me to be the child who gets to live in Wonderland, you see. I am in Wonderland. And if I fret about it and say, God, I don't want to play this way. Please take Wonderland away and just give me what I want. I want to eat all the cotton candy I can today. And I don't care what happens to me because I'm too stupid to see what happens if you eat all that cotton candy and nothing else. Then God would say, well, if that's the way you want to play it, but I think you'd be better off just to let me figure it out, control it, you see. Because cotton candy has its limits, you see. And being the golden idol has its limits too. You can ask Robin. You can ask Steve. You can ask so many people how it was to be the golden idol, you see, and have everybody bow down to you and say, I want to be you. I want to be you. I want to be you, Robin Williams, and be able to play all those cool parts. I want to be you, Steve Jobs, and have all that money. Think about it. What part do you want to play? Why not just let God say, this is the part you have to play. And if you have to be the golden idol today, then that's what you're going to have to do. And if you put a rope around your neck and end the day, that's what you do today. So don't worry about it because you're always going to come home. And I'm always going to say, honey, how did it go for you? And little by little, you'll come to see it's better just to be a child of God that will say thank you every day for the wonderland you gave to me. Thank you every day. I don't need anything more than what you give to me. I have everything I need because you know me better than I know myself, you see. And then every day will be a miracle. And every day will bring you something new. And you won't have to cling to the bedposts and say, no, no, I can't go that way. No, no, God, I can't go that way. I can't do it that way. And maybe everybody that you knew will go to heaven and renew their faith in God, you see. And maybe you'll be left behind to help humanity to survive so that all those people that went to heaven will have a body that you provide through your trust on life to come back to earth and say, I learned my lesson today. I learned my lesson today. I'd rather just go out and play than have to drive my gas guzzling car 10 miles to my job that I hate, but I take just so I can earn enough money to go on vacation and throw my trash all over those pristine beaches, you see. It's up to you. It's up to you how you want to play. It's up to you where you will be today. Because if you trust on God, and God will say, here you are today, here you are today. And you see, if you want to be someone who is happy, then trust on God. And if you want to be someone who's miserable, trust on trying to run the world. So it gives you all the cotton candy you want and all the plastic and, and all the gas and all the brass trust on being the king or queen who gets to command God to be your servant, you see. Now we'll quit for today. And thank you that you did come to play, Monica. Thank you for being here. You. We love you. And we want you, you, you to too. love us too. Yeah. And that will be a happy day for me to see your smiling face again. All right. Thank you, guys. Any last thoughts before we close down today? All right. Well, thanks to the listeners for this. And thank you, Monica, for being willing to be uh, 
a messenger of hope for people, because I think you are. This has been an amazing connection. And if you found that you it resonates with you, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because the communication from heaven side is changing our hearts and changing this world. And we want you to be a part of it if it resonates with you.